It, the way it rumbled, it kind of made me nauseous. Really? It was a weird sensation this time. They're also different depending on the depth, right? Yeah. Hi guys, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake did strike and not in California, guys, because you might expect that because California has seen a really, really high magnitude in the seven range. No, 5.8 in Nevada. And you might think, why Nevada? Isn't that strange? Or you might think, is that related to what happened in California? Hmm. But there is something very strange about it. And that's why we have to talk about this in this video, guys. So this is not from fracking or something like this that some people might think. This is actually very, very interesting. So because it could have implications on California and it was felt in California. That's the interesting thing. So I'll show you a picture here of a pool in California that was moving. So interesting and uh, maybe there are more connections underneath the earth than we thought or than we know of. And it's going to be a very, very interesting video, guys. So stay with me. Let's start right away. So I am being watched. Maybe you see it in the window behind me. So that earthquake 5.8 um, hit Nevada Monday afternoon. And according to the United States Geological Survey, the shaking was felt as far west as California. And the quake struck 15 miles north, northeast of the town of Yarrington. That's about 40 miles east of Carson City. And the local time was 3.08 p.m. And this was widely felt, guys. And this, I'm sure, caught many people by surprise, probably many snowbirds as well that are are being there so more than 10,000 people reported that they were feeling the earthquake um, on the US geological surveys USGS USGS uh, website in a little over two hours after it hit so so many reports this tells us that people were really surprised maybe upset maybe shaken up maybe scared they reported it right they felt oh this is completely not normal so that's why they reported it so and then many, many aftershocks were striking. So at least 14 aftershocks were striking the same area um, within the next two hours before 5.30 p.m. And they were ranging in size from 2.5 to 4.2. So quite significant. We can say it's like micro seismic. And the depth of the initial quake was shallow. It was relatively shallow at 8.4 kilometers. And the USGS says everything that's under 70 kilometers is considered shallow. So strong to very strong shaking was felt near the earthquake's epicenter. That is what we see when we look at the USGS intensity map and also, Carson City and even Reno did see light to moderate shaking. And overall, this magnitude 5.8 was one of over 31 earthquakes that was recorded in Nevada, in this area in western Nevada, on Monday as a whole. The reports about the shaking, they were coming from Western Nevada, but also from Eastern California. They also felt they need to report this. What the USGS says is this event is identified as the potential main shock of an earthquake sequence. And already last month, we saw 43 earthquakes in this particular sequence. So what is going on, guys? What is going on, guys? We're finding the answers here. The magnitude 5.1 earthquake happened just days after a magnitude 7.0 earthquake struck off the coast of California, prompting a tsunami warning. Thankfully, no tsunami happened. But, you know, then an ongoing earthquake swarm that is still happening um, with significant earthquakes rocked Alaska on Monday as well. So I feel like no matter where you go right now, something's happening. Earthquakes, volcano, you know, sounds really, really a little bit scary in my opinion. 
but you know you guys you wrote in the in the comments and of a very very cool guy um he says and he's the experts when it comes to these earthquakes um you know don't be scared be prepared and i think that's the right attitude because if you live in these areas you can't change it anyway so shout out to dutch you're absolutely right and uh, yeah we should hammer that into our heads but when you're traveling it's a little bit harder to be prepared I imagine people in Nevada in this area that are in an RV traveling and but you know if you're in the RV and it's it's shaking this thing is shaking all the time anyway so you feel like you're on a boat this one is a rental it doesn't have leveling jacks or anything right so if you move it's shaking so you can get seasick so nothing can really happen right no building can collapse on you unless you're standing near something that might fall on this RV but still, I'm always taking care that I have enough water, that I have enough food, that I have enough food for the doggies so that I am okay. Should something happen, I can go to stores, I, you know, road closed, landslide, volcanic eruption, who knows? I mean, um, I'm close to the Pacific Ring of Fire with volcanoes all over the place, with the Cascadia Fault. I mean, San Andreas Fault is not that far away. So Alaska is not that far away. So you have to keep that in mind for sure. But now guys, really, really, and this is interesting what we're talking about now, is there a correlation between everything that is going on? And guys, this weather here, I'm in Eastern Washington at the border of Idaho. It's, well, this stupid car doesn't have a temperature sensor. So it's cold, I can see my breath, but I'm sitting here in a sweater and the sunshine and the grass is green. It's absolutely amazing. But let's have a look at this shake map here. There you really see where the earthquakes happened around Yarrington, that's near Silver Springs in Nevada. And this earthquake that hit the area was stronger than the usual. So it's definitely something out of the ordinary. The nearest major city to this is Reno, that is 77 kilometers away, and it has a population of roughly 241,000 people. And of course, many were surprised. So the quake was felt in Reno and even further away, but what is really interesting is that it has caused a much stronger shaking closer to the epicenter of course so there was damage the people reported like minor damage such as cracks in the walls inventory fell off the shelves in numerous stores thankfully no reports of injuries so tectonically what is going on there how is this earthquake related? It's related to a fault line along the Walker Lane. That's how it's called. This is a fault system that's roughly 100 kilometers wide. So it's not a super small one. And it's this one is often described in literature as diffuse because it does not have clearly defined lateral boundaries and no dominant main fault. So instead, what we're seeing there, there are several normal and transverse faults running per parallel to the length of the Sierra Nevada. So this area basically strikes southeast northwest and extends from the Garlic Fault in Death Valley, that's another fault, to the Honey Lake Valley region to the north. So it seems there's a lot of fault systems going on. There's an interesting study that a geoscientist wrote. He works for the University of Oxford. His name is Ian Pierce. Um, he studied the Walker Lane fault system. And he says about 20% of the annual 50 millimeters of right lateral shear between the Pacific and North American plates is absorbed by the Walker Lane fault system. So let that sink in. This fault system is absorbing tension from the major plates. So is this good or bad? That's what we're wondering, right? So the Walker Lane 
absorbs energy, which according to his study can prevent or delay larger earthquakes in urban areas along the Pacific coast. Interesting, right? But, you know, if you're absorbing stress, where is the stress going? So what the scientist says, however it is absorbed by the Walker Lane, and this absorption causes stress to build up along the Walker Lane. And that is eventually released in earthquakes. So is this what we're seeing right now? Is this connected with the seven that we saw in California. There is an interesting theory as well about the San Andreas Fault because from the San Andreas Fault, there's so many other like hairy fault lines going on, like vertical. And what scientists are now thinking or trying to find out and, and basically also confirming is, you know, we're always thinking what could trigger the San Andreas Fault. So we know two tectonic plates are sliding along each other and then they're getting stuck. And when that being stuck is released, then we see the big one. Same for the Cascadia Fault. It's a subduction zone. The two tectonic plates are basically sliding underneath each other and then they're stuck. And then once they release, it's causing the big one. And there's always the theories, if we see a lot of smaller earthquakes, is that releasing tension? When it comes to the Cascadia Fault, scientists are saying no, could be the opposite. And then that's what I wanted to talk about. I got carried away, but I'm circling back to that, is these other faults that are along the San Andreas Fault that are parallel vertical, they're trembling. These guys actually could trigger the San Andreas Fault through their movements, they could trigger the big one as well. So what we're looking at here, and this is the question that is raised in my mind, okay, it's absorbing the stress, but could it also cause it? You know, this scientist says, okay, it's absorbing the stress. That's why we see the higher earthquakes there. Um, but could it be the opposite? Could could it be that these fault lines, their trembling, could also cause something bigger? So I think they need to do more studies about this and everything is more connected. It's not as plain as easy San Andreas Fault, if this moves and ruptures, big one, Cascadia Fault. There's so many other fault lines that might be involved. And that is just within a week, California 7, this 5.8. So did the 7 trigger this or vice versa? We cannot really say, but the seismological lab of the University of Nevada and Reno, they predict that they will feel aftershocks over the next couple of weeks even. So this is going to continue. Um, they say central Nevada is prone to bigger earthquakes, so they were not super surprised by this, but they're keeping an eye on things in the area. They're saying, well, in Reno, we have big fault lines that basically go right through the city. And then Mount Rose Fault is one of the faults we also keep a close eye on. That's what they're saying. Well, it's basically everywhere, right? There's also big faults in the Lake Tahoe area, for example. So it's not, oh, I'm getting off the coast, so I'm off the hook from the Andreas Fault. No, unfortunately not. And uh, they say we feel a lot of these earthquakes that are coming from these faults. They're certainly capable of generating earthquakes in the six to seven range. So so not only coastal California. And so they're saying that's why we're trying to get ready to prepare for it. But people need to be more aware of this, seismic codes, building codes, stuff like this. And they're even saying that this 5.8 was felt as far as San Francisco even. I bet some people that live there were a little bit scared. So what they have released as a statement just today, and I quickly tell you this, um, they say at a depth of roughly seven miles in a fault zone known as the Wabuska lineament, it was a left lateral strike slip earthquake. So the Wabuska 
Liniment is one of a cluster of northeast striking faults in the mountains east of Reno. So a left lateral strike slip earthquake. And you see it here in the map that explains how these earthquakes are working, how the strike and slip event is happening. So they say earthquakes like this have been happening in this region known as the Walker Lane Shear Zone, which follows the California-Nevada border. And they say this has been happening for millions of years. The Pacific tectonic plate is moving northwest relative to the North American tectonic plate. And while most of that takes place along the San Andreas Fault, it also causes deformations further east in the crust of western Nevada, creating the complex web of fault lines in the Walker Lane. And I think they need to study this web more closely. And they're asking again, they want more reports. They said anyone who felt the earthquake is requested to fill out a form on the US Geological Survey website indicating the intensity of shaking at their location. So guys, if you liked this video, please leave it a like. And if you're new here, subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you again. And to all of you, thanks so much for supporting this channel. If you're wondering where I am, um, for those of you who know, I am in Washington at the border of Idaho because my dog needs radiation treatment, Apollo needs treatment. And I'm so grateful for your support because without you, that would not have been possible. And he's early into his treatment but it's already working so because of you guys he's doing better and I'm so grateful for the coffees you keep sending me on my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site if you want to keep doing this to support his monstrous vet bill I'd be so grateful the link is in the description of this video guys and uh, more to come very very soon check out my videos um, about Iceland very interesting if we compare everything that has happened on the Reykjanes Peninsula since 2021 since Fakr so the eruption that just ended was the 10th eruption within a short period of time and also other areas are rumbling very interesting video that I just released last night about Alaska Mount Spur that one is an interesting volcano that is rumbling and threatening Anchorage so check out that video as well and if you like if you want to see more behind the scenes of what we're doing here please become a member of my channel I'd love to see you there and for everyone who is already a member and a silver level member guys you're awesome I'll see you there very soon stay safe bye bye